Entrepreneur on Fire, episode 151. Welcome to EntrepreneurOnFire.com, where remarkable entrepreneurs share their inspiring story. Let their journey illuminate your path to success. And now, your host, John Dumas. Fire Nation, you love great audio content, and because of this, Audible is offering Entrepreneur on Fire listeners a free audiobook and 30-day membership. I recommend The Icarus Deception by Seth Godin. He narrates the entire book himself, and it is incredible. Jump on this limited-time offer at eofirebook.com. That's eofirebook.com. Okay, let's get started. I am simply ecstatic to introduce my guest today, John McIntyre. John, are you prepared to ignite? Hell yeah. (laughs) All right, man. In less than 12 months, John, also known as the autoresponder guy, built a lifestyle business that allows him to live anywhere in the world. He currently works as a copywriter and strategic marketing consultant, writing email autoresponder sequences that get prospects addicted to reading their email. Man, I would love that, John. And I've given Fire Nation a little overview, but why don't you take a minute, tell us about you personally, we want to get to know you, and then share with us what you have going on in your business right now. My name's John, I, I'm, I live in Thailand right now. Um, I'm a copywriter, I'm writing copy for people, autoresponders, and yeah, kind of like this business came out of nowhere, uh, really, which I'll tell you more about that, I suppose, a little bit later. Yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself personally, we want to get to know you. Well, I, uh, so I'm from Sydney, Australia. I've done a, done a bunch of sales stuff. I used to play the guitar. Well, I still play the guitar and uh, played in a few bands. And I uh, went to Nepal, did some trekking there. I, like, so I fell in love with travel. And uh, now I've ended up kind of living abroad, learning Thai and uh, living permanently in Thailand at the moment. Awesome. Well, thanks for that little background. And I'm really looking forward to delving into your business as the autoresponder guy. But before we do, John, we start every show off here at Entrepreneur on Fire with a success quote to get that motivational ball rolling and get Fire Nation pumped up for this content you have for us. So take it away. There's this great video by Will Smith on YouTube. It's called Will Smith Wisdom. And it's basically a compilation of all these different videos where Will Smith gets interviewed on, on what he thinks the key to success is. And he, quoted, he actually quotes Franklin Roosevelt, but the way he says it is really good. Is the only, so here's, here's the quote. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And that, that's, that, I think that's so true. Like the theme that I decided for, that I wanted to be the theme for my year this year was if you're scared of it, go and do it. Because um, that, what we're scared of seems to be like it's the exact path that we have to go down. So John, what's something that you've done this past year that you've been scared of? I was in the Philippines uh, staying in a resort for free in exchange for some marketing work I was doing for them. And it came time for me to leave. And when I was told that my time at the, at the resort was up, so it was per, you know, we parted on perfectly good terms. When I was told the time was up, it, was, uh, it scared me because I didn't have enough money. You know, the wall. I didn't think I did. And I had no idea how I was, you know, I was in the Philippines. I didn't have a ticket going back home. I didn't have much money in the bank or anything. So it was kind of like, woof, I better, uh, I better make, make it happen. Yeah. What were your actions following that that made it happen? It was just a classic, like the bridges are burnt. I had to make it work. I had to, uh, I had to do something and quickly. And I was already writing copy. Uh, yeah, I'd started learning copy a few months before that. And uh, once I realized that I would you know, have to leave and start paying, you know, paying for my accommodation, paying for my food and, and start traveling around a little bit more, I, I think I just became more aggressive. You know, I, was, I started doing more things that I was scared of because I had to. There was no other choice. So it was, it was scary. Like... Uh, when I was told, but the two months later when I actually left, I was more excited than I've been in years. No, I love the burning the bridges, just like Cortez did when they landed <laughs> in the Americas and he burned the boats and he said, you know what, guys? There is no going back. There is no retreat. There's only going forward. So his handful of soldiers literally were able to take over a good part of the continent because they knew that it was succeed or die. There was no middle ground. So sometimes when entrepreneurs are backed into a corner, when they really just had that survival adrenaline pumping through their veins, that's when you realize, you know what? 
it's not that bad to pick up that phone and make that call or to send that email or put myself out there because I need to do this to survive. So it's obvious to see that you've done that, John. It's exciting. And we're going to use that to transition into our first real topic, which is failure, which are challenges and obstacles. As entrepreneurs, we face so many times throughout our journey. Share with us a time that you failed or that you just came up against an obstacle that you had to dig deep to overcome. And then share with us how you overcame that. Well, I, uh, so I moved to the Philippines. And so I'm orig- like I said, originally from Sydney, Australia. And uh, I, I've been to Nepal in 2011 at the start of the year. And when I came home, I had to get a job. Uh, I didn't have a business. So I, I had a website that was making a little bit of money online. And uh, I was mildly depressed. I didn't want to work in a job, uh, especially after being away in somewhere like Nepal. So uh, around about September, I found uh, an opportunity where I could go and move to the Philippines, work at a resort for a day or two a week, and I'd get all my food and accommodation for free. And the idea was that I would uh, you know, be able to work on my own in a new business, which was at that stage generating you know, a small amount of money each month. And, um, but <laughs> and I was really excited, so I applied. And for some reason, you know, I got the job. I didn't think I would, but I landed it, went to the Philippines. And the week after I arrived, there was a Google update, uh, which a lot of people would know about. And th- the Google update just wiped out the site. So I ah. moved to the Philippines to do this business thing. And <laughs> a week after I arrived, whatever I had, which wasn't much at the time anyway, but whatever I did have was just wiped out. Man, well, John, that is definitely a scary thing because you were relying on that income. You had that set up, worked into your budget. You knew you had that buffer when your feet hit the ground in the Philippines. So take us down to the ground level. This is your journey. This is your story. What did you do at that point? Oh, at first, I was really frustrated. I, you know, I tried a bunch of stuff. I tried to fix the, fix the site because it was based on a website. And I tried to fix the website up. I tried a range of different things and nothing worked. And I, I remember talking to a mentor on Skype and I was just, I can remember the angst in my voice, man. It was, yeah, it was, yeah, I was just frustrated. I didn't know what to do. And I, I felt just so disappointed. I, I don't know, in myself or in life because I'd come over to, to make something big happen and the opposite had happened. And here I was with, you know, kind of no clue what to do or how to move forward. Wow. Well, sometimes it is those moments that really define an entrepreneur. So what did you do at that moment to move forward? I just kept learning. Um, like I didn't, didn't change straight away. I, I tried a, a number of different ideas. Some of them were quite funny looking back. Share with us a couple of those. Oh, man, the funniest is a, I was in the Philippines, right? So the funniest was a dating site. Uh, some of these dating sites are huge in, you know, in Southeast Asian countries. So me and a friend had this crazy idea that we would go on one of those dating sites and we would send, uh, <laughs> send all these girls different messages We'd say, hey, we've started a new dating site where you can meet a guy. And the idea was that we'd get, we'd get all their, uh, you know, their details and their photos and put it into a spreadsheet. And then we were going to create a, a YouTube video uh, with, with a slideshow of these girls' photos. And then underneath, it was like, well, you can buy these girls' details for $7. Here's the link. That was the... Because <laughs> what had happened was the, uh, the friend who actually owned this resort he, uh, he, he had this uh, YouTube channel and one of his most trafficked videos was a, a video about, uh, you know, about, it was actually just about where he interviewed the waitresses at the resort and it was called Hot Girls or something like that. It was just a fun kind of friendly video where he interviews the girls and it was the most viewed video on the entire channel. So he had this idea where we'd get all these girls' details and then sell them to other guys who were traveling to the Philippines and like that. So it was, <laughs> It was a pretty, fu- it's, a, it's a funny idea looking back. No one bought it. <laughs> oh man, well that is just what's so great about hearing the jury of entrepreneurs. And <laughs> that's what I always love to pull out at Entrepreneur on Fire are these moments when you failed and when you've been challenged and come up against these obstacles that you didn't think you were going to overcome because so many listeners have just started or are about to start their journey and they're scared about having these things happen to them too, but they just need to realize that it's going to happen as part of the learning process, as part of the curve, as part of getting to that aha moment that actually is something special. And that's just a perfect segue, John, into your aha moment because as entrepreneurs, we have these every single day. Some of them don't work out, some of them do, but take us back to a time in your journey 
when you had an aha moment, just this light bulb came on and you said, this is actually going to resonate with my authentic self, with my true person. And then share with us how you turned that moment into success. What you said just now, I can sums up something that was really big for me in the last like 12 months and a little bit over that was realizing that that failure and screwing up and getting it wrong and doing weird ideas that just don't work, like that's par for the course. It's not if you're unlucky that happens, it's literally par for the course. And that's, it took me the longest time to get that. To, like I had this irrational idea that if you were really good at what you did or if you were successful, it meant you could somehow skip those, that part of the process. But you can't. Like no one does. Uh, some people try and hide it which is it's misleading and it's not very empowering to other people when they go on, you know, ma- you know, failure. But yeah, it's part of the course. I think that was a huge aha moment and that's like an ongoing one every day. What, you know, when I try and do stuff to remember that if I'm in the, like if I'm in the ring, if I'm in the game, like that's what counts. It doesn't actually matter what results I get today because if I don't get the perfect results today, maybe I'll get them tomorrow. And if not tomorrow, maybe next week. And this was this ongoing thing where, Man, getting things wrong is like the more things you get wrong, the more like you increase your you know, probability that you're going to get something right. No, that's a powerful insight. And that's one of the things that I really struggle with in today's society because I feel like we are just going about things in completely the wrong area because we're trained not to fail, not to get anything wrong from the time we can talk from the time that we can write. We're taking tests where if we get something wrong, it's a big red X on the piece of paper. Although in a way, those mistakes, those challenges should be celebrated because we're learning from those. You're not always going to be learning great things from what you're doing right. Because especially on multiple choice questions, you may have just guessed, got it right. What are you learning there? But if you get it wrong, at least you can get to the root of the problem and find out what you're doing wrong and improve as a person. So I really would love to see some kind of transition in our society to where we're celebrating failures, we're celebrating mistakes, and then we're celebrating success, and we're celebrating everything that's growing people as individuals towards their authentic self. So, John, you mentioned that you had something specific. So go ahead and share that as well. It's about marketing. And so around, it was about March, I launched my first product online, which was, a, it was actually a weight loss product. I, you know, I had a website, and I had a recipe book and no one was really buying it. I wasn't getting many sales and it was uh, about, you know, it was like 30 recipes. That was the title of the book. And I, you know, I didn't know what I was doing wrong. I actually got on the phone with someone. It was actually for a job interview, but this guy kind of, he was a really good guy and he really drilled into me. And I, uh, you know, based on the results that I was getting, he kind of challenged me to, to stop being, basically stop being a pussy and start doing something. <laughs> and so I got, I got off the phone. I didn't get this job with him, which is probably a good thing looking back. And uh, went and kind of looked at what I could do to fix it. And one of the things I did was I changed the title. I changed the title from a commodity-based title, which was 30 recipes, into a benefit-based title or a result-based title, which was lose X pounds in X days. And it was like night and day, man. Like It was like a switch had flipped and people started buying the product. Now, what that did for me was it was like, whoa, like that's the power of words and not only words, like the power of marketing and positioning and, and controlling people's perception. Now, if and one thing I've like learned recently is that that when you understand, like if you have a truly valuable product, I really believe that we have a duty to put that into the hands of the, as many people as it can actually help. Because if we don't, in a sense, we're stealing from what the value that they that could have been or that they could have had. So, the, the aha moment there for me, but you know, back in I guess March or April, around about that time, and that's when I started learning how to write copy, and transitioned into what I'm doing now, was like if I know how to be that guy, how to how to get customers, how to how to find people, and how to tap into needs, uh, and really how to understand the marketplace. Like, there's always going to be a need for me because I'm either going to be making money in my own businesses. Or I'm going to be a guy who's helping other people do it because they'll always need it, even in a, especially in something like a recession. So it was just, and even now I, I, I totally still believe it, is that it's just the highest leverage point. I can walk into a room now and it doesn't matter, like anyone, no matter what their business, we can sit down and we can talk about it. And I might not know anything about the, the, the technical side of what their business is, like a electrical manufacturing or something like that. And 
I could almost definitely guarantee an increase in that business based on what I now know about marketing. And that makes you valuable to almost anyone, just like that. And that to me was, that to me was mind blowing. It still is. I, it still blows my mind. It's, it blows my mind how many small, small business owners and how many internet people do not understand marketing properly. Wow, what a niche. And the power of copy is incredible. Just by switching from a commodity base to a results oriented. So, yeah, so, it's, so commodity is it's recipes, just saying what it is, and then change it to a benefit base. Like, here's what you're going to get out of it. You, you're either, are you buying 30 recipes or are you buying 20 pounds of weight loss? Oh, see, that's so great. And just how you really break down the fact that you now can provide value to anybody, to any business at any time has got to be incredibly exciting because there's nothing more valuable than providing value. And you now know how to do it through words, through tactics and copy that you have just proven time and time again. So John, with all that being said, have you had an I've made it moment? I think I absolutely have. One of the, the most recent times was when I touched down in Thailand. I, I just, so I, that was, so I was in the Philippines, right? And I get told I had to leave this resort. My uh, time there was over. And that was when I got really scared. And then two months later, I actually left. And by that point, I'd ex- I was generating some income. And when I touched down in Thailand, I went to a business conference. And I finally felt like, yeah, I was there. But it didn't make, the funny thing was like, was I've made it. I, I guess I'm an entrepreneur now. Like I'm doing this. It's for real. It's not me staying in a resort for free. Like I'm doing this on my own dime. So it was kind of like an I've made it and now I'm going to keep doing more of it. Not a I've made it, I'm going to relax now. I love that. And it's so powerful to hear the different responses from all these entrepreneurs that I interview because everybody looks at the I've made a moment differently. And I love to focus on the journey and the different milestones you're hitting. And you are just continually hitting great milestones as you're understanding more and more of the value that you can provide. And that's such a great lesson for the listeners to realize that these entrepreneurs are just going to be able to provide this valuable information on so many levels to so many businesses. And it's just powerful, powerful stuff. So John, let's move into your current business right now. As we've already been talking about, you have a lot of exciting things going on because of this light bulb, this switch that just went off in your head. Just this prototypical aha moment. But what are a couple things that are just really exciting you right now in your business? So, so I started copywriting. We started learning how to write copy in March or April this. And I sent my first invoice in June to someone, basically a mentor who gave me a chance. And, uh, and then I did a sales letter for a friend. It was for $100 at the time. And it just grew from there. And at the start, to be honest, I had no idea what I was doing. I was just finding needs and you know, talking to people and finding out how I could solve their problems if they needed a sales letter or some emails done. And that's kind of grown. So at the time, it, like for a few months, month after month, like I, I didn't have a plan. I didn't have like a, a product. I hadn't productized anything. I was kind of flying by the seat of my pants. So uh, I think it's worth pointing that out is, is just so that people know that you don't have to have it all figured out before you start. You can just start right away and figure it out as you go and then iterate, iterate, iterate. So, and then that's kind of what's happened. And then now the main thing I do is uh, 10 email autoresponder sequences. So I still, do sale, uh, I still do sales letters from time to time. But the main thing that I'm seeing uh, that the marketplace is asking from me are these 10 email sequences, sometimes shorter and sometimes longer. Uh, so that's kind of that, that's kind of where it's at now. And then what I'm really excited about, and uh, is so I so we got all these order responders, uh, but I can only handle a few of these clients at any one time. So I've decided to turn this into a big course, uh, basically a four week course that teaches people how to how you know, how I create my order responders. Uh, it'll have things like templates, best practices, that type of thing. So that's what I'm that's what I'm pumped up about. That's what I'm working on late at night and early in the morning. That's exciting stuff because that is just the great evolution of an entrepreneur. You start off, you make some mistakes, and you have this great aha moment, and you just start working so hard doing this task or this service or this product that you're so excited about, and you're just trading your time for dollars, but you're just getting great results, and you're continuing to push your understanding forward. And then you're saying, well, wait a second, I can leverage this. I can make this scalable. I can sit back, 
create this amazing product and reach hundreds of people instead of just this limited product where I'm having to work on a one-on-one basis and just trade my time for dollars. So the evolution of an entrepreneur, that's really where it gets exciting. You're on the precipice, John, of just breaking into that really exciting factor of having a product that's scalable so you can wake up in the morning after a great night's sleep and see that you sold (laughs) a bunch of these products to people all over the world. So I definitely commend you for that. And take us down the road a little further in the future. Share with us what your vision is for Drop Dead Copy. I see it as being more of basically a resource for for copywriters. I haven't got it all mapped out. Uh, I'm thinking, so once we get this autoresponder uh, course out, I'd like to put together some software that helps people write sales letters. Uh, That'll be later this year. And uh, I also think that there's there's probably a, a market for a community. I've had a number of people say to me, like, I'm blown away by how quick you've you know, started earning money from copywriting and doing it from, like, it's, I do it anywhere. I could, I, could, I could live in Sydney or Thailand or the U.S. It doesn't matter. Um, and the, the funny thing when these people ask me, like, how did you do it so quick? I always think, well, look, now that I've been there and done that, if I could go back in time, I, I swear I could do it in half the time. So I think there's, I think there's a there's an opportunity there to set up a uh, a community where, uh, and I'm sure they're already out there, but I'll do it the, the drop dead copy way, where uh, you know I would teach people my process for for how to uh, how to build a copy business or how to build some sort of marketing practice they can do from anywhere in the world because I really think this kind of thing this uh, you might call it micro multinational, um, or is it's the way of the future. Uh, where there's, you have these smaller, you know, smaller corporations or really, really small corporations run by a couple of people making money and creating value for the marketplace anywhere in the world. I, I really think that's the way of the future and the more people that get on board, the faster the transition is going to happen. No, that is exciting. And I just like to equate that to when people interview bands and they just say, wow, this hit that you just came out with is so amazing. You're literally an overnight success. And then the band members kind of look at the guy and say, what are you talking about? Like we've been playing in dumpy little ratty bars for 10 years to build up to this moment, you know, slowly building our audience, slowly refining our sound and our instruments and our cohesion. And yeah, we did just finally get a song that clicked and now we are a success, but it wasn't overnight. Yeah, absolutely. So John, we've now reached my favorite part of the show, the lightning rounds. And this is where I get to ask you a series of questions and you come back at us Fire Nation with amazing and mind-blowing answers. Does that sound like a plan? Sounds great. What was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? I think it was not getting what being an entrepreneur, what being an entrepreneur was being about. Uh, so, I mean, I grew up in a, a working-class family, and so, so no one was really an entrepreneur. I didn't grow up with that. I grew up with an employee mindset, and it's it's been fascinating to kind of watch that change over the last you know the last year or so but I really reckon that's what held me back I had some really I guess inaccurate ideas about what it meant to be an entrepreneur and when I finally got them things changed and for me and what you know for me what really worked is understanding that at, a, at its most fundamental basis being an entrepreneur is about solving problems that's it pure and simple solving problems and charging for it and it's something to feel uh, extremely good about uh, because yeah it's just, it's just I think it's it's one of the best things you can do when you're creating value out in the world it's easy, like so a working class person might feel guilty for it they might think it's you know it's wrong to be rich or it's wrong to be wealthy but I, I guess understanding that being an entrepreneur is really one of the most valuable things one of the most valuable ways to contribute to society and that understanding that's kind of changed everything what is the best business advice you've ever received do the work. Uh, I've heard this from a number of people, so there's, there's no one person I can credit it with, from mentors, it's in books. There are no secrets. Uh, put in the time, have a goal, work consistently. That's all there is to it. What's something that's working for you right now? Uh, attention. So attracting, well, and attracting the right type of attention. Uh, so I do autoresponders, so I don't want the attention of people who are just interested in copy advice or sales letters. So therefore, all my content and my positioning is focused around autoresponders, which means that I get the, the very targeted, specific attention of people who go, oh, I need an autoresponder. 
and they look at me. But I don't waste my time with people who wouldn't be interested in that. Great advice. Do you have an internet resource like an Evernote that you're just in love with that you can share with our listeners? I text Wrangler. It's, it's not a, an online app. It's a, like it's like a desktop app. I think it's only on Mac though. But anyway, so Notepad++ would be the Windows equivalent. It's basically a cross between Evernote and like your basic Notepad editor. So imagine basically, so imagine a Notepad with a sidebar on the left hand side that allows you to switch between different text files. That's all it is. And I've been using this with uh, the getting things done or kind of an adaptation of that, that productivity system. I've been using it for about two years and I've only changed it in really minor ways and it's worked perfectly. It's so simple and it's not clunky and slow like uh, Evernote and all those other apps tend to be. Nice. You're the first person to say one negative thing about Evernote. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if you could recommend a book for Fire Nation, what would it be? Uh, Atlas Shrugged. I, uh, I'm new to the book. I have, I'm only just read uh, the first like part one. I think it might be three books total. I don't know. I, I think I've just finished part one. And I'm not sure if the book that's done it or if the book just simply caused a lot of other stuff to come together. But it's totally changed my mindset. And so I mentioned before about the, the working class family thing. No one's really entrepreneurial. So they, everyone's got a certain attitude towards wealth, business, and money. I see this all the time in, in employees now. And it's kind of like mildly cynical. It's a bit, a little bit like, oh, that's impossible. So disbelief and doubt and a little bit of guilt about wealth. Like people don't want to be too successful, though they wouldn't really know that. And Atlas shrugged reading you know, what I did. It's kind of set off all these mindset changes and realized that all that uh, stuff that I used to believe – is pretty much wrong and that making a profit is the absolute best thing I can do for the world and here's why. If I spend $100 to make something and I sell it for $150, I've literally created $50 out of thin air. Yeah. Therefore, yeah, right? So therefore, the greatest good we can do is to make as much profit as possible because we don't really make $50 for ourselves, right? That's what, that's what the working class mindset would say. Well, yeah, you've only made $50 for yourself. That's so self-centered. But that's not, that's not seeing the big picture. The big picture is you make that for the global economy because you take that $50 profit and you spend it on food, clothes, travel, and so on. So $50 profit is $50 wealth added to the world that wasn't there before. So therefore, profit is the absolute best thing we can do for ourselves and for the entire world. Wow, what a great way to look at things, and especially in this new digital economy where people like yourself and myself are creating these digital products that have incredible value for so many people, but once we've created it once, it's not necessarily costing us anything to recreate it because it's not a physical product, and we are just continuing to create more and more profit off of this one product we've created. So I love you sharing that mentality with me. It's very impactful and important for Fire Nation listeners to really grasp what you're saying, John. So thank you for that. Quick note, Fire Nation, you can get the audio version of this book for free by going to eofirebook.com, a gift from Audible for Entrepreneur on Fire listeners. That's eofirebook.com. So John, this next question is my favorite. It's kind of tricky though. So take your time, digest it, then come back at us with an answer. Imagine you woke up tomorrow morning in a brand new world, identical to earth, but you know no one. You still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have right now, but all you have is a laptop and $500. Your food and shelter is totally taken care of too. What would you do in the next seven days? I'd go and contact a web designer and I'd call him every day, every, maybe multiple times a day because I only have seven days. And I'd just say to him, hey, look, man, I do, uh, I do marketing consulting for, let's say, $2,500 a month, and let's, let's do a, you probably have 200 customers. Let's mail them, and let's say, let's say if they sign up with me, I'll give you 20% of the first month. So you make $500 per customer that comes through, through your list. So let's say he has 200 clients and 10 of them come with me. He's just made five grand, and he didn't have to do a single thing. So I would use that $500 then to package up some, uh, like a direct mail um, some, you know, some, uh, basically a sales letter or a promotion and we'd send that out for the $500 and I'd help this web designer make some money and then I'd have a whole bunch of clients, 10 clients, two and a half grand a month is 25 grand. 
Nice. That was real actionable advice, John. And you've just given us actionable advice this entire interview, and we are all better for it. Give Fire Nation one parting piece of guidance, then share with us how we can connect with you, and then we'll say goodbye. One thing that I really want people to understand is that it's not that hard. It's, well, it, it's, hard. it's not complicated, but it is hard. It's hard work. And if people just take the time and do the work and uh, focus and persist, they're going to get there in the end. And every failure that they, that they have is one failure less that stands between them and wherever they're trying to get to. And uh, as for the plug, well, I've actually put together a, a, goodie, a goodies bag for uh, anyone from Entrepreneur on Fire that wants yeah. to learn more about Okay, so anyone who wants to learn more about autoresponders, uh, so they can go to dropdeadcopy.com forward slash EOF, and there will be uh, some resources there. I'll give you my personal checklist I use when writing an autoresponder, and a, uh, and a template you can use to get your email autoresponder started. So that's over at dropdeadcopy.com forward slash EOF. Well, John, I hope you have a powerful server because Fire Nation <laughs> listeners are going to be flooding to drop dead copy slash EOF because everybody can use some great copy. And I just love where you're coming from. I love what you're producing. Thank you for being so generous with your time, your experience. Everything that we've talked about today is going to be linked up on the show notes entrepreneuronfire.com slash John McIntyre. Also, your link, drop dead copy slash EOF is going to be linked up there as well. People can go directly there or go to the show notes page and get to you that way. Either way, you're going to get some great content. John, Fire Nation salutes you and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thanks, John. Fire Nation, what great idea do you have brewing inside you? Enough brewing. Take powerful action today. Go grab your domain and get your website up. I've created a simple seven-minute tutorial that will walk you through acquiring your domain for free all the way to your first post. Go to eofirewebsite.com to access this great tutorial, your free domain, and much more. That's eofirewebsite.com. Thank you for joining us at EntrepreneurOnFire.com, your daily dose of inspiration. Prepare to ignite.